Imagine that your giving was so great that it could change the current state of affairs, the trajectory of your community, and have sustainable long-term impact. By working with LCF, you can make the greatest impact possible. In this video, Sue will share how London Community Foundation gives her the flexibility to do all of this through her fund. Sue, in addition to setting up your family's fund, are there other ways you work with LCF to help you make an impact? Um, yes, actually, for sure. And, and uh, one of my early things with LCF was to do with a fund that was set up for SARI Therapeutic Riding. Um, I was chair of the SARI board at the time, and Martha Powell of LCF helped me understand the donor-advised fund that SARI's founder had set up because I had met a um, family in London who were interested in supporting SARI through their will um, rather than, but they were concerned about leaving a large gift to such a small charity um, in terms of managing the assets. And so I was able to ascertain that they could actually leave their gift to the SARI donor advised fund and provide an income to SARI. Um, so that was really helpful in, in um, securing a legacy gift for SARI which of course I felt very strongly about since I'd spent so much time with, with Sari. Um, from, with my own fund, um, was wonderful because LCF uh, was willing to work with me on a transformational gift I wanted to make to London Health Sciences Foundation. So uh, it was a complex process. Sue, how would you describe transformational giving and what motivated you to do this? I think maybe there's a definition of transformational giving, but it's something that makes a huge difference, I think. Um, what motivated uh, me to do this was actually a transformational gift by another person. Um, you may remember reading a group of people who made a significant fortune many years ago in software development. Uh, Rick Baker was one of those people. In early 2016, Rick was diagnosed with late stage pancreatic cancer. Pancreatic cancer has poor life expectancy, even though there had been some progress in treatment of that disease, nothing was available here in London. And Rick, uh, had the means to travel outside of Canada, I think, mm -hmm. to seek treatment. And as a result, he gained several more active years than had been thought possible following such a diagnosis. Uh, so during Rick's, he wanted to make a difference in London, and he decided he could do that in his lifetime so in 2019, he and Rick and his wife Shelley made a transformational gift to create the Baker Center for Pancreatic Cancer. And the purpose of that center was to provide more targeted, personalized treatment uh, and give new treatment options for pancreatic cancer patients. And so by the time Rick died in September, 2020, uh, the Baker Center was up and running a number of clinical trials. Um, they were intent on producing new diagnostics and treatment options for pancreatic patients. And I learned about all this work through uh, London Health Sciences Foundation, their um, impact magazine. This kind of brought the Baker Center to my attention. Um, and I realized that uh, here was an opportunity that my daughter, both my daughters and I, could make a really significant gift in Tom's memory, both from his estate and from our family fund. Because of some changes I, I was making in the management of Tom's estate, I knew that we would be able to confirm a gift of a million dollars over a two-year period, um, and uh, entered into a detailed memorandum of understanding with 
London Health Sciences Foundation. Um, the first year of that gift uh, came by way of a contribution from his estate was again a gift of shares to, to manage that tax. The second year of the gift was to come through uh, my fund at London Community Foundation. So that, that's where I really got involved with working closely with London Community Foundation to make sure that second year part of the pledge could be paid. But I didn't have enough money to do it. Uh, I thought I might, but I wasn't so sure. And what if I died uh, before that second year happened? So that's when I worked very closely with London Community Foundation to go back to the gift of life insurance that we talked about in our last video and guarantee that at my death, if that pledge hadn't yet been met, the portion that I had committed to London Health Sciences would come out of the proceeds from the life insurance policy and go directly to London Health Sciences Centre and the balance would add to the capital of my fund. So that took a bit of negotiation, um, adding to the legacy gift commitment I had made. So it was a lot of work. Plus, um, the memorandum of understanding I had with London Health Sciences Centre agreed that part of my major gift would go to um, administration of the foundation. And then I remembered that when London Community Foundation made a disbursement, they specifically said it had to be used 100% to the gift. So I had to go back to London Community Foundation and say, you have to honor my commitment to London Health Sciences that part of that is going to administration. No problem, he said. So again, it was, it was an understanding of legal commitments that you make in a transformational gift that London Community Foundation was able to work closely with me, which was great because I was having a fit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Why was funding the Patient Health Facilitator at LHSC's Baker Center for Pancreatic Cancer so important to you? Ah, yes. <laughs> Good question. Um, when Tom was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, there was very little information available to patients. Um, I was really fortunate that our daughter Allison, who was then just a young cancer research scientist, she was able to interpret all this technical information for Tom and me. And um, it was a very big role for her to play at such a young age for her father. Um, but I couldn't have survived without her help. So we knew um, how important that kind of role was to patients. And when we saw that was uh, a key fundraising initiative of the Baker Center, it was a no-brainer. That's, that's what we had to do, even though some of the scientific projects were very interesting to both Allison and I. We felt that the, uh, the patient health facilitator was the way to go. So, Have you already seen the impact of your transformational gift to LHSC? Oh, yes. Um, so they did a virtual gift announcement, and uh, my lawyer was, was watching this, and one of her colleagues came in who had been working with a, a client who had pancreatic cancer. So the colleague raced off to tell her client that there was help at hand. Um, another friend whose husband had died of pancreatic cancer saw this gift announcement and um, decided to add that to her list of annual uh, gifts. And um, there was a Twitter um, that alerted the attention of uh, a former colleague of Tom's 
and he and his wife made an undirected gift to the Baker Center's work. So it was pretty exciting, you know, that, uh, that um, just an announcement of this spurred other people on to either use the service or contribute to it. So, Sue, thank you for sharing your story with us. You're welcome. We hope that after watching this video, you see the power of planned giving and how working with London Community Foundation can help you make an impact on the community and leave a meaningful legacy that will continue for generations. As you can see by Sue's story, LCF has supported her every step of the way with her philanthropic goals. By working with LCF, you're not on your own to navigate the charitable sector. You also have sound governance and stewardship of your philanthropic wealth. We encourage you to learn more by reaching out to your own professional advisors and getting in touch with us at LCF. Visit us on our website, lcf.on.ca. Thank you, Sue and Hugh, for your time and insights. You're welcome.